So in this video, I'm going to discuss the second part of the infections in pregnancy. In the previous part, we have discussed bacterial infections and we have discussed about the toxoplasmosis. In this video, I'm going to discuss about other viral infections. So we are going to discuss about the other viral infections. So next very, very, very important infection is varicella zoster virus, right? That's which causes 60 chicken pox. 90% of the women, because we have taken vaccination prior, are immune to varicella zoster virus. But sometimes if, you are, if we are not immune, then it definitely can cause teratogenesis in the fetus. So primary infection is mainly direct contact, contact or respiratory transmission. So we usually get the varicella zoster virus infection primarily through contact or respiratory transmission. The incubation period after we have a contact with others, if you are not immune, then we tend to get the infection. So the incubation period for the infection to develop is 10 to 21 days, 10 to 21 days. Clinical picture, one to two days of flu you'll have and three to seven days of crust we'll have. So initially it will start with one to two days of flu and then we'll have three to seven days of crust and we being infective to other the infective period will start one day before the onset of rash until the lesions become crusted so it will start the infective period will start we acting as a source of infection to others will start from one day before the onset of rash until the lesions become crusted so the fetal and neonatal infections in the first half of the pregnancy, if we acquire chicken pox and we are not immune to chicken pox, then there is risk of congenital varicella syndrome to the fetus. So we can transmit to the baby and can cause congenital varicella syndrome. So what is this congenital varicella syndrome? There will be chorioretinitis, microphthalmia, cerebral cortical atrophy, IUGR, hydronephritis and limb hypoplasia. So, uh, in the for fetal and neonatal infection, in the first half of pregnancy, so there will be risk of congenital varicella syndrome. So, what is this congenital varicella syndrome is? Chorioretinitis, microphthalmia, cerebral cortical atrophy, IUGR, hydronephritis and limb hypoplasia. So, the limbs will be very small, right? So, baby will be IUGR, hydronephritis. Most of these viral infections affect the brain. So, cerebral cortical atrophy, eyes also will become small, microphthalmia and cerebral cortical chorioretinitis, right? Highest risk of transmission to the fetus is between 13 to 20 weeks of gestation. So, highest risk of transmission to the fetus is between 13 to 20 weeks of gestation. So, if the fetus or neonate is exposed to active infection, just before or during delivery. Now, one type of infection from we spreading to the baby is mainly during the first half of pregnancy. So, first half of pregnancy, we can spread the infection to the baby, right? And at uh, that time, we have congenital varicella syndrome. Now, again, there is also highest risk of transmission around 13 to 20 weeks. Second modality of transmission is during delivery. So, if the fetus or neonate is exposed to active infection just before or during delivery, then baby can have disseminated visceral or CNS infection. Then baby can have disseminated visceral or CNS infection. Okay. So, varicella zoster immunoglobulin should be given if the neonate is born to the mother who has varicella 5 days before and up to 2 days after delivery. So, it's better to if mother acquires varicella, it's better to like, you know, uh, prolong the pregnancy for seven days so that mother will start developing antibodies and those antibodies will be sent to the baby instead of delivering the baby with the infection. So let the baby acquire natural antibodies from the mother, right? So if the fetus or neonate is exposed to active infection just before or during delivery, then there is disseminated visceral or CNS infection. 
So varicella zoster immunoglobulin should be given if the neonate is born to mother who has varicella five days before and up to two days after delivery. So for maternal exposure, we have to do varicella zoster serological testing. If negative, varicella zoster immunoglobulin should be given within 96 hours and up to 10 days. So any maternal exposure, varicella zoster serological testing should be done. If negative, varicella zoster immunoglobulin to be given within 96 hours and up to 10 days. Mother has the risk of acquiring varicella zoster pneumonia. Mother has a risk of developing varicella zoster virus pneumonia. So we for mother, for mother, this is not for the baby, for mother, a cyclovir IV 500 mg per meter square every 8 hours should be given. So a pregnant lady acquires chicken pox 3 days prior to delivery. She delivers by normal vaginal delivery. Which of the following is true? Both baby and mother are safe. Give antiviral treatment to mother before delivery. Antiviral will not help. It is antibodies which mother should develop and she should transmit to the baby. Give antiviral treatment. No. Baby should receive immunoglobulins. Baby will develop neonatal. Yes. Baby will develop neonatal varicella syndrome. So whenever mother acquires infection 5 days before or up to 2 days of delivery baby has the risk of varicella zoster uh, neonatal varicella syndrome. So you have to give varicella zoster immunoglobulin. That's about the varicella. Next, a pregnant lady develops chickenpox during which part of her pregnancy will it lead to highest risk of neonatal infection? Last 5 days, 12 to 16, 18 to 12, 16 to 20. So highest risk of transmission we have read here that it is 20, 13 to 20. So you can choose the most nearest answer of 13 to 20. I think this will be the best, 16 to 20 will be the best answer. So next coming to the mums. First trimester risk of spontaneous abortion but it is not associated with any congenital malformation. So mums can cause first trimester may abo spontaneous abortion but it has no risk of congenital malformation. Next coming to the rubella virus. Rubella virus is a type of toga, toga virus. This is most teratogenic. Rubella virus is most teratogenic. So transmission is mainly by na na nasopharyngeal secretion and its risk is 80%. Rubella virus is a toga virus. The transmission is mainly due to mainly by nasopharyngeal secretion and the risk is almost 80%. Incubation period is 12 to 23 days. Incubation period is 12 to 23 days, right? Less than 12 weeks, if we acquire rubella, 90% risk of infection. So better terminate the pregnancy or offer termination. 13 to 14 weeks may 50% risk. 13 to 14 weeks may 15% 50% risk of transmission to the fetus. End of second trimester 25% risk of infection. First trimester less than 12 weeks 90% risk of infection. 13 to 14 weeks 50% risk. End of second trimester 25% risk. So it mainly causes congenital rubella syndrome. It mainly causes congenital rubella syndrome. So what do we have in congenital rubella syndrome? It cardiac mate causes patent ductus arteriosus, pulmonary stenosis, microcephaly, cataract, microphthalmia and hepatosplenomegaly. Most common single defect which is caused by rubella is sensory neural hearing loss. The classical triad of rubella is patent ductus arteriosus, cataract and sensory neural hearing loss. And most sing common single defect if somebody asks, it is the sensory neural hearing loss. Post, post exposure, you have to give immunoglobulin within 5 days if you want to, if you want to reduce the transmission to the fetus and uh, prevent the congenital rubella syndrome. So diagnosis, you have to, if you have done antibodies and IgM testing is positive within 5 days, then it is positive. IgG means she is immune, so not to worry. If serum IgG peaks 1 to 2 weeks after the rash, High avidity IgG antibody indicates an infection at 2 months in the past. High avidity IgG indicates anti antibody indicates an infection at 2 months in the past. Right? So prevention is by MMR vaccination. Please remember, ask the patient to avoid pregnancy if taken vaccination. Avoid pregnancy for 1 month. Right? So if somebody is planning and she is not immune to MMR, then better give MMR vaccination. 
and ask her to plan the pregnancy after one month, right? Now, if somebody has unknowingly taken the MMR vaccination, somebody has unknowingly taken the MMR vaccination, then no need to terminate that pregnancy, you can continue the pregnancy. Then no need to terminate the pregnancy, you can continue the pregnancy, right? So that's about the rubella virus. Rubella virus is most teratogenic, 90% transmission, 90% risk of transmission infection if the uh, exposure is before 12 weeks, okay? So that's about the summer viral infections in the pregnancy. Thank you guys. See you in the next video. Thank you so much. Happy studying. Keep studying. Rock the exam. All the best guys.